Tal is very smart. We you know what he's done. He started out, you know, with these plays and church buses would pull up, packed, and he's parlayed it into a, you know, bought his own jet. You know, you can buy a jet, you got money. But at the same time, for me, just imagery is, is, is troubling. A lot of what's on screen today can be called coonery or buffoonery. And while it's making a ton of money and breaking records, there's definitely room for better content. Some might wonder if Tyler Perry's work is painting a harmful picture of black men, making it seem like they're always the bad guys or living troubled lives. Perry has been successful, no doubt about that, going from being homeless to becoming a multimillionaire who owns one of the largest movie studios in the country. But despite his massive success, it's surprising to see that A-list black actors aren't lining up to work with him. So, what's the deal? Yet, if those films, and I mean, we're, we're talking about Tyler Perry at this point. <laughs> no, no, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying we're talking, let's, let's, not, let's not give him fodder for tabloid. I'm not saying we're talking about Tyler Perry, but those are the shows that we're talking about. If we're talking about that, and we look at the numbers that come and see his movies, that view the shows on T TBS, my question is, is that in fact, maybe, what black America wants to see? A large well, part. Look, I hear a lot of no's here's and the thing, though, a lot of people watching it. Here's the thing, no. Because, we, I mean, we've had this discussion back and forth because uh, when John Singleton, you know, people came out to see Boys in the Hood. He did Rosewood. Nobody showed up. So a lot of this is on us. A lot of this is on us. You know, we, you vote with your pocketbook, your wallet, you vote with uh, your time. Perry has built an empire, and his journey is inspiring. The man literally went from living out of his car to owning a private jet and raking in billions of dollars. But while Perry's rags to riches story could make for a gripping movie, what we usually get from him is a repeated formula of comedy involving him dressed up as Medea or similar characters. Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. They play good women, and I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. We put too much pressure on Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He ain't put nobody on. The people that been in his productions, they not famous. All of them can walk through the mall without security. Be what you're going to be, but put your people on. If you a gay person and you in there, put some other gay people on. Put somebody on. Or don't be wondering why people keep saying gatekeepers. Because clearly, y'all are keeping these gates. Clearly. Some heavyweights in the industry, like Spike Lee, have spoken out against Perry's style. Lee has never shied away from controversy, and he's been very vocal in his criticism, calling some of Perry's work coonery and buffoonery. He argued that the content often plays into stereotypes about black people, reinforcing harmful imagery that can set the culture back rather than lifting it up. Lee, who has a strong network of famous friends, including Wesley Snipes, Denzel Washington, and Samuel L. Jackson, has real clout in Hollywood. So when he talks, people listen. About There was a lot made of the, and I, I know you, you may say, or a lot of people would say they don't want to get into it, but it's a perfect transition with some of the things that you'd said about Tyler Perry, because a lot of people would say, well, Tyler Perry is someone who is opening doors potentially for opportunities that right. Hollywood have normally passed oh, on, I, and you were pretty tough on, on my Tyler man, Perry. My man, my man, my yeah, man. Three my man. Three so my far. mans? I'm in trouble. My man. Four. I have never ever said that Tyler Perry was not a great businessman. I have never ever said that Tyler Perry did not provide many jobs for people of color. And in fact, me and Tyler Perry, Perry are cool. So there's no beef between us. It's been, you know, supposed beef between us. Him and, him and I were together. Is There's no absolutely static or ill feelings between me and Tyler Perry. 
The tension between Spike Lee and Tyler Perry gained public attention around 2009, when Lee compared Perry's films and shows to the stereotypical depictions found on what he dubbed the idiot box. Despite acknowledging Perry's knack for captivating audiences, Spike's beef was with the image Perry was projecting to millions. For Lee, Perry's focus on pandering for ratings, even at the expense of pushing stereotypes, was disappointing. You just took exception, I think the quote was, you took exception with the content of some of his films. Yes, but that was, I made that statement like almost five years ago. But here's the thing, Spike, and, and I, I take exception with his show that he does on the radio mm -hmm. and we might get on the radio and talk shit about it we might get on the radio and talk shit about Scythe but we're all cool and there's right. a mutual respect mm -hmm. I think because you're Spike Lee and because your brand the Spike Lee brand the 40 Acres and the Mule brand has been synonymous with um uh, uh, social commentary through film right or uh you know taking issue with you know someone who's doing buffoonery and coonery um i think that when you come out and speak it's automatically assumed mm. that you're taking exception to someone when you're really just providing your opinion well when i do say stuff like that when i do say stuff like that i always say i'm not speaking on behalf of anybody myself i never ever ever said i'm speaking on behalf of 45 million african-americans i said i say this is my opinion and my opinion alone perry didn't just let the criticism slide in 2009 during an interview on 60 minutes he was asked about spike lee's remarks perry didn't mince his words responding that he was tired of hearing spike's name and told him to go straight to hell he was fed up with what he saw as unwarranted critiques from Lee, who also had negative things to say about other big names like Oprah and Clint Eastwood. There are some who don't understand Perry's work and dismiss it, many of them African Americans. They find characters like Medea, Mr. Brown, demeaning caricatures, racial stereotypes. Spike Lee has said, and I quote, I think there's a lot of stuff out today that is coonery and buffoonery. I see ads for Meet the Browns and House of Pain, and I'm scratching my head. We got a black president, and we're going back. The image is troubling, and it harkens back to Amos and Andy. Right. He's talking about you. I would love to read that to my fan base. Let me tell you what Medea, Brown, all these characters are, are bait. Disarming, charming, make you laugh, bait. So I can slap Madea in something and talk about God, love, faith, forgiveness, family, any of those things, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's that, that thing, you know, that pisses me off. It really does because I it can is, tell. Yeah, it's so insulting. It's attitudes like that that make Hollywood think that these people do not exist, and that's why there's no material speaking to them, speaking to us. Despite Perry's clapback, many weren't convinced. Critics began pointing out real issues with his work, such as the way it consistently depicted black families in problematic situations. They also raised concerns about the portrayal of black men and women, who often come across as weak, morally flawed, or downright evil in his films. Behind the scenes, there were whispers about a toxic work environment, enforced religious practices, and Perry's views on LGBTQ issues. A shuffling that you could you could literally shuffle these scenes anywhere you wanted to because you have such heavy content and then you relieve us by going to this hysterical comedy then we go back to the heaviness but I keep thinking that did you ever move any of these scenes around play around with it no I didn't it's written that way it's a, they're very deliberate it's a the minute I feel like a scene is getting too heavy because I know this audience so well it's like okay time to laugh so let's bring in the big guns let's bring in Medea and uh, so that's how I write. I write from that perspective where I can go from dramatic to comedy. And it drives critics crazy, but it works with the audience. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, like I said, I mean, get really heavy. I, I pr appreciate the, the yeah. levity. You know, I, ooh, it's a relief because, yeah. you know, I, I have a problem like watching Derek break down. To me, yeah. it's just like, you know, like, uh, I mean, he's such a tremendous actor. Yeah. But it was so, it was so great. To, it's time to come out of yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. No, and what, what I think, one of my favorite actors is, is, has always been Derek, uh, but... And I think that's a no-brainer for the role. You need mm -hmm. somebody solid, you need a scene like that. But in the in role of Keisha, I can't imagine that somebody would say, hey, we need to get, for that role, I, know, I didn't see her ever doing that role. Yeah, but you know what? I was working with her on House of Pain, and she's such a delightful person that I knew she needed an opportunity to show people she can do so many more things. And she auditioned for it, and I was just like, okay. And I'm like, if you're ready, I'm ready too. So, yeah, she and she's fantastic at it. 
it, you, so you know your audience. I mean, I know you yeah. have a huge fan base online. It's like it's huge. Yeah. You know, just they're everywhere, and you just you see like little like spider webs of uh, posts going mm -hmm. here and there. And moreover, there's a noticeable trend in Perry's casting that hasn't gone unnoticed. Dark-skinned black men are frequently typecast as villains. Comedian Chris Rock has even commented on this trend, noting that you won't find many kind or respectful dark-skinned boyfriends in Perry's films. To make his point, Rock jokingly suggested that if Tupac Shakur were alive today and appeared in a Tyler Perry movie, he'd probably be cast as the bad guy. Rock's joke may have been delivered with humor, but it highlighted a serious issue. Perry's films don't always offer diverse character portrayals that move beyond simplistic or negative tropes. Punch the hell out of you, say something else. That is my answer to Spike Lee. Go to hell, go sh I will punch the hell out of you, say something else. Let me just, let me just say this about Spike, uh, anybody else, or all the critics, anybody else. You know, it's only black people that do this to each other. I have never seen Jewish people complaining about Seinfeld. I've never seen Italian people complaining about The Sopranos. It's only us as Negroes that do this to each other. It's And I can't fix it. Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois did it. You know, uh, Langston Hughes said that Zora Neale Hurston was a new version of the darker. This woman wrote Their Eyes Were Watching God. She spoke from a Southern point of view. Here, he, here uh, Langston is in New York with his Harlem slickness, and he couldn't understand it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. I speak from the South. People love it. Why in the hell would I sit here worried about The criticisms go deeper than just the casting. There are also concerns about Perry's behind-the-scenes control. He's known for writing, directing, and producing his films single-handedly, without a writer's room. While this might seem impressive, it raises questions about the quality and diversity of the content. Many argue that Perry's lack of collaboration leads to repetitive storytelling and underdeveloped characters. The result is that while his films are profitable, they may not offer the depth or cultural significance that black actors and audiences desire. Like spider webs of uh, posts going here and there. And do, do you ever take feedback from them and, and use it? or do you Oh, certainly, yeah. They're my lifeline. You know, it's what I've learned on tour for years and performing in front of those very people who are on the message board, who are on my email list. So yeah, if, if something's, I, I know how far to go and how not, how, which way not to go because of, you know, messages or because of just being out there on the road. Right. And these movies keep getting more successful, but one will have to, do you, do you is there a ceiling? Do you think that I want to, you know, it keeps getting bigger and better, but is there an end? Do you think that you, or are you just going to keep on doing it because that's what the fans want? As long as they want to see it, there won't be an end. So I'll keep doing it as long <laughs> as they want to see it. But the minute they stop coming, that old broad's going to die a quick death. I that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, for, for you personally, throwing on that wig, though, I mean, uh, having so many hats wearing already, is, is, is that, the I mean, the fun part of, of actually doing all this? Is no, to, hell no, no, that's the worst part of it, <laughs> well, just trying, yeah. to, trying to be in costume, man. After sitting there for seven hours in costume and makeup, that's the, that's the worst. The worst, but the fun is seeing when it's all done, seeing the finished result, and seeing people really get inspired by yeah, but you, it. I mean, when you when you started off and you're doing the, the live plays, you yeah. get instant feedback, but and you don't get you get two two year feedback after you do something from a movie. I mean, how do you know what's going to work? I mean, you have to wait for a response. Yeah, you? but 15 years on the road has taught me what will work and what won't work. So I'm just still grinding away at what I know works. You know, the minute what I'm doing doesn't work anymore, I've got to go back on the road to see what happened. Yeah. And they'll tell me. You uh, have always have such great cameos. Uh, do you have any of people like like kind of hinting that they want to maybe be in the next uh, Tyler Perry movie? You know, right? at this point, I think everybody wants to do a little cameo, <laughs> which is really great. So, no, there have been no hints, but any hint, any hint that's dropped, I grab it really quickly. I, uh, I, I hate to give anything away about a movie, but the end credits with the they show the the uncut Doctor you know, Phil segment. To me, that is just, am I assuming it's exactly what it was? Two people just, just no script, just going Just like it? we're sitting here talking. I had two cameras going. He had the script in his hand. If you notice, he's looking mm -hmm. at it. He's reading, but he kept getting lost, so we just kept going. <laughs> and I'd throw him off, too. I'd tell him, he'd say a line that I, I didn't like. I'd say something else. And he'd look, and he couldn't find where to go. So he just started going at it with me, man. He was really great. Yeah. Spike Lee, on the other hand, has taken a different approach to filmmaking focusing on creating stories that highlight the richness of black culture without falling into stereotypes. His films may not always rake in blockbuster money, but they're known for their authenticity and social impact. For Lee, it's not just about making money, 
It's about contributing to the culture in a meaningful way. You have been critical of black film and the production value of some black productions mm -hmm. because you believe it's stereotypical. And you don't, and you're, you strive not to do that in what you call prototypes rather than stereotypes. Why are you so critical of that? Well, number one, I'm a student of cinema. I, I live and breathe cinema. I've been a professor of film at New York University for the past 15 years of graduate film school where I finished after I finished in Morehouse. I'm artistic director of the school. And I know the damage that the, the dehumanization and the degradation of not just black people, people, but people of color, women, Native Americans, Hispanics, and all the damage that's been done through the imagery throughout the history of television and movies. All right. It's so simple. So I'm going to ask you, do you think you've been critical of Tyler Perry? Do you think Tyler Perry, are you lumping him into that? I think of all this, everything I need to say about Tyler Perry has been said. The man's a brilliant businessman. He's doing what he does. God bless him. What do you mean by God bless him? I mean, God bless him. He told me to go to hell. I say, God bless him. He told, he told me to go straight to hell. That's even different. <laughs> but do you God really bless him. Another point that comes up in these discussions is the lack of growth opportunities for actors in Perry's films. While Perry's productions have provided jobs for black actors, critics argue that these roles often do little to elevate an actor's career. Many of the actors who have appeared in his films are not household names, and even those who have had repeated roles in his productions don't seem to gain the same level of fame as their peers working with other directors. History, you're growing up, it was pretty tumultuous childhood. Yeah, I, I grew up in New Orleans uh, to uh, parents who are still together after 40 something years where, yeah, there was a, there was a lot of, um, I was the object of my father's disaffection, there was a lot of abuse there, but you know, I'm, I'm on the other side of it now and, and celebrating it, but it's been a journey getting here. You give that message of hope and you talk so much in the movie about forgiveness and mm -hmm. learning how to move on. Yeah. Where, where was that point in your life when you said, you know what, I got to get rid of all this junk because yeah. it's holding me down. Yeah, when I, when I said that I was celebrating the abuse is what I mean is I, I, found, I found out in life that everything that happens to you can work for your good if you let it, no matter how bad, no matter how traumatic. I, you know, for me, my turnaround came when I forgave my father for everything that he did and I realized after doing that that everything that had happened had brought me to this position mm -hmm. where I am now and has allowed me to be able to write these stories mm -hmm. and, and develop these characters because had I not been through those situations I wouldn't have the experience to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. What can you tell other people? Not everybody can afford therapy, yeah. can go out and say, you know what, I've just got it within myself. Yeah. We all have it. Right. But how do you get that person on the street or that person who feels like these are the four walls that I am just stuck in? Yeah. How do you get them out? The thing about it is, what that's why I think my, my shows, all the plays that I've done and the, and the movies have been so successful is because a lot of people can't afford therapy. I'm, I never went to therapy. But what, these, what, my, what my characters and everything, they speak to it, they give advice in situations on trying to um, put a mirror in front of people to say, is this me? It provokes thought. It makes people want to um, offer, it offers change or the possibility of hope. And I think that what's important to, for people who are really, really going through and don't know how, it's just one step. For me, it was faith. It's a lot of mm -hmm. prayer. I totally mm -hmm. believe in mm -hmm. God. And, and p people may believe in other things, but for me, it was mm -hmm. God, faith, and prayer. And, and that, for me, had, had there not been church and to help me get through those things, I don't know what I would have done. I just, I want people to walk away from this movie wanting to be better, mm -hmm. wanting to go higher and, and go deeper within themselves. So that's what this is about for me. And if that happens... Then, there's the issue of typecasting. Actors who participate in Perry's projects often find themselves pigeonholed into roles that reflect the same tropes. Abused women, problematic men, and dysfunctional families. The result is that some top-tier actors who have the choice to be selective may avoid working with Perry to escape being associated with such portrayals. Something that happened recently with a friend of mine. He called me up, he said, 
you know, you're contagious. I said, well, how am I contagious? He said, you know, I was spending some time working with you, and now I'm going to start my own business. I said, great, man, that's great. He said, well, when you see it, you know, don't, it's nothing, it's nothing impressive. And I was explaining to him, never, never despise small beginnings. The Bible says that never, dis never despise small beginnings. There are things that happened that can happen out of the smallest little start that can change the world. I also, he was telling me how frustrated he was because nobody notices him or nobody sees him or nobody will give him a break. And I explained to him about in my own life how sometimes, sometimes, People are out trying, they're pushing, they're getting cars, they're trying to be seen, they're doing all of this stuff. Sometimes God will hide you. And let me tell you how I know that. In my own life, I, I was under the radar for a very, very long time. And, and for the most part, I still am, um, believe it or not. I really am. Um, you're, I, I was kept from a lot of things, a lot, kept from being exposed to a lot of business um, ideas and business situations and business um, um, thoughts or how things were run and by me being kept away from that it allowed me to not be tainted by it so sometimes you have to be hidden sometimes people are not supposed to recognize you sometimes people are not supposed to invite you to the table you can't be angry about it you need to accept it and find out why why am I being hidden because I tell you now had I went the route that I wanted to go, what would have happened is I would have ended up in Hollywood and did the deals that everybody else had done and there would be nothing different, nothing um, spectacular about the blessings that I've received. It would just be an, an average um, story. But because I was hidden, because I didn't know how it went, because I didn't know uh, how things were supposed to go in film and television, that ignorance allowed me to carve my own way. I know this may be difficult for some people to understand, but, but hear me clearly when I say this. Because I was hidden, because I, nobody knew what was going on with the success that I was having on the plays, it was all underground. When I got there, I was able to make deals that are, were unprecedented. They didn't think there was anything to it because they didn't know who I was. Completely underestimated. The great thing about being hidden is that you can be underestimated. And when you're hidden and you're underestimated, you're able to do some things that will um, not only change your path, your life, but the lives of millions of people, the ones around you, your children, your family. It will uplift and change everybody and everything. So what I say to you is, if you're struggling and you're fighting to be seen, sometimes you're supposed to be hidden. It's not your time to be seen yet. Stay the course, learn what you can, walk in the path that you're supposed to at this time. And at the right time, God will reveal you, your talents, and everything you've done to the world. Furthermore, there have been murmurs about the work environment on Perry's sets. Some have reported that there's a strong emphasis on religious practices, which doesn't always sit well with everyone. There are also concerns about the director's alleged stance on LGBTQ issues, which could make it challenging for some actors to align with his brand. What is your legacy for your body of work? You know, the studio's gonna be what it is. This, that's gonna be what it is. I tell you what, I, what I'm most excited about next is that pulling this, this next phase off is building a compound, a, a for uh, trafficked women, girls, homeless women, LGBTQ youth who are put out and displaced, and having a compound that is a beautiful place right here on somewhere on these 330 acres where they're trained in the business and they become self-sufficient. They live in uh, nice apartments. There's daycare. There's all these wonderful things that allows them to re-enter society and then pay it forward again. So that's, that's what I hope to do soon. The question remains, can Tyler Perry change his approach and win over more black A-listers? That might require rethinking his storytelling style, collaborating with other writers, and offering roles that move beyond the stereotypical. Given Perry's immense influence in the industry, any shift in his approach could have a significant impact on the portrayal of black stories in mainstream media.
did you make it? How did you make it? Well, I tell you, there's <clears throat> only one answer for that. And I, I say this in press all the time, but people you will cut it out of articles or they don't want it printed or they don't want it said. But the truth be told, it was nothing but the grace of God. Nothing but the grace of God. You can plant seeds all day long. You can go around giving your business card to people. You can go around knocking on doors and auditioning. You can do all of that every day of your life. And nothing, there are time, for most people, nothing happens. When a seed is planted in the ground, all you can do is water it. You cannot control the sunshine, you cannot control the weather, and you cannot control whether the locusts will come and try and destroy it. All you can do is plant your seed in the ground, water it, and believe. That is what allowed me to be in this position right now. I would not stop believing. I planted my seed. I worked really hard. I had one idea, and that was to do a play. All the other stuff came. My only idea, my only focus was to do my one play. And I knew if I could get that to work, everything else would come to pass. There's so many people who go in so many directions. They, this week they're doing this, and next week they're doing that, and next week they're doing this, and next week they're going to be in real estate, and the next week they're going to open a salon. And those, those kind of people are all over the place, and I usually try to get them to focus. For now, it appears that many of the top black actors are choosing to stay away from Perry's films, not necessarily because they dislike the man, but because they seek richer, more nuanced roles. If Perry is willing to evolve, he might just attract the talent he's currently missing out on. Focus on one thing, one area. Put all of your energy into watering one area. If you spread the water across many, many seeds, you don't have as much water for one seed. So focus on one thing. Make it your priority and stick with it no matter what. No matter how many people told me no, no matter how many people lied to me, no matter how many times I put the show up and nobody came, uh, I remember when I did my very first show, I worked my butt off and saved $12,000 tax returns from h and Block money. I saved it, worked hard, saved it myself, rented the 14th Street Playhouse, put that show up, thought that uh, uh, 1,200 people would come over a weekend and 30 showed up and I knew every one of them. But I didn't stop. That didn't deter me. That was in 1992. Uh, 93. Same thing happened in 94, 95, 96, 97, up until 1998. Same devastation of nobody showing up in the audience. I was doing one show a year, working with different promoters, trying to get the show up, and nobody showed up. But I didn't stop. And my, 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 what I say to you now, looking at me now, here, I am a human being. There's no difference between my humanness and your humanness. The only thing is, if you're trying to get there, you cannot stop believing in any way. No matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody tells you, you have to know it beyond knowing it. And it is a, it is a feeling. When something is for you, this is how I knew it was for me. When something is for you, there's a feeling that is deep down inside of you that will not allow you to let it go. You have, it, will, it will keep you going when you can't even keep yourself going. That's why the mantra here at the Tyler Perry Studios is a place where even dreams believe. Because there comes a time in your life where you've worked and you've stressed and you tried to get there and you couldn't on your own. But you have a dream. And that dream has to take on the belief for you because you can't do it by yourself. So what I would tell you is this. Don't stop. Narrow your focus to one idea. One. And make it work. That will give birth to all the others. All you can do is plant the seed and water it. God himself has to give the increase. Only God can make the sunshine. Only God can bring the rain. But if you've planted the seed, then you've done your part. I wish you so much success in 2012. Anything you want is possible. God knows I'm a living witness. Please feel me. Please hear this from my heart. Anything you want is possible. If I didn't believe it, I wouldn't take the time to send this message to you. Do you think Tyler Perry should take a different approach in his movies? Should he bring in other writers to help diversify his storytelling? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep the conversation going.
And if you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to subscribe to Buzz Voices for more celebrity gossip and entertainment news.